So World Rugby caused a bit of a stir amongst the rugby world a few weeks ago with their announcement of ambitions to create a new international league to replace the June and Autumn Internationals, with these plans being firmly opposed by a lot of players and even international rugby unions. So why is this the case? Well, I, NGJ, will be the light that shines through this complicated political fog as I explain what the fuck is going on. So first up, the plan. The plan that World Rugby is proposing is to replace the June and November international friendlies with more competitive matches. World Rugby said it wanted to change the international calendar to enhance their excitement, significance, and value. It was initially reported that they wished to make a 12-team World League, which would see every nation compete against each other, either through the Six Nations, Rugby Championship, or through the July and November Test. As part of the latest proposal, the USA and 2019 World Cup host Japan would join New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, and Argentina in the Rugby Championship, with the Six Nations operating as usual. Under the World League format, teams will play each other once a year, with the semi-finals and final to be held in the Northern Hemisphere in December, and this World League would not be held in World Cup years. Now on the surface, there doesn't seem to be much wrong with this proposal, but when you think about it a little bit more, you realise the teams from the Pacific Islands would rightly be furious at their lack of inclusion in this competition, considering their contribution to World Rugby over the years, as well as the fact that they would probably benefit the most from being part of a tournament like this, not just constantly rubbing shoulders with high-level international teams, but also financially. It's a big deal when these teams play against teams like the All Blacks, and exposing them to even more big games is a massive financial opportunity for these Pacific Island nations, that they would seemingly just be outright not invited to be a part of immediately. This was the most prominent subject of public outrage, but then there were also players voicing their concern about the announcement, with big personalities like Johnny Sexton and Owen Farrell all talking about how world rugby aren't considering the players' welfare, and the fact that international rugby is so much more taxing than people realise, and and playing back-to-back -back international games, which the schedule World Rugby suggested showed, is not something that should be taken lightly, and that this plan was clearly made by people who don't understand the impact of modern international rugby has on the players' bodies. Now, all of this is planned to launch in 2022, but after pissing off both players and international rugby unions, and the general public concern about the impact of this, World Rugby announced that they would have emergency meetings addressing the concerns of both the players and the international rugby unions. Now, after all this, I was thinking to myself, why would World Rugby do this? Aside from trying to give American and Japanese rugby a bit of a rub and to get them going, especially America, if they truly embrace the sport, will have a lot to offer, not just in terms of success, but such a big country has a lot to offer monetarily as well. But whilst I worried my pretty little head about all these details, World Rugby in the meantime, World Rugby addressed this controversial move, explaining the fact that this new system would involve relegation and promotion, stating, At the meeting of unions, competition owners, and international player representatives, World Rugby outlined details of a game-changing competition model that delivers a true pathway for all unions through a three-division format, and a system of promotion and relegation. Now that's fine, but that still doesn't address the fact that a country like Fiji wouldn't be included in this new nation's league in the top competition despite being the ninth ranked nation in the world according to their own ranking system, ahead of Japan and the USA, and countries like Tonga and Georgia who are already ahead of America. But then, the statement continues, and it all makes sense. They state, the proposed format would be underpinned by a record commercial partnership with leading global sports marketing company Infront, guaranteeing almost five billion pounds for investment in the sport over the initial 12 year period, of which more than 1.5 billion is guaranteed in incremental revenue for the world game. The proposed business model covers both media and marketing rights, but does not include any sale of equity in the competition, and therefore full control of the competition and its revenue redistribution model would be retained by the unions, the current major competitions and world rugby. So this nation's league deal is worth five billion pounds. What? Five billion, that's mental. And suddenly this all makes sense. A perplexing decision with loads of different subplots that just don't add up. Now I understand why World Rugby are doing this. They are trying to guarantee their future financially. And if you spin this the right way, there is an argument for this new league. Pacific Island nations are always asking for more opportunities to play against rugby's elite because it helps them business-wise and World Rugby are offering an opportunity to do that technically, but they are also not doing right by these countries at all. Like Fiji deserve, in this hypothetical situation, to be in the top league, without question. But World Rugby's safer financial bet, I imagine, is to bring a country like America into this big league and get the big guns like the All Blacks playing games over there, like what's happened before, to grow the game even more to try and get them to the table, as like I've alluded to before. Once America's at the table, things will grow. A lot. But let me be very clear, it is a very, very, very shitty thing to do. 
keeping the Pacific Island nations out of the top league for the first year. So now you may be wondering what are the current state of affairs? Well, it's been reported that the powers that be are extending their talks for another week as it was supposed to end on the 5th of April, on whether World Rugby's concept will be given the go-ahead or at least be considered. The English RFU along with other Six Nations unions seem to be uneasy about the situation, as they feel the gap between the Six Nations and the second tier could be disastrous if you're relegated, and needs reassurance from World Rugby about how that second division would work. The interim chief executive Nigel Melville said he had huge concerns about the commercial impact of dropping out of the Six Nations, with RFU insiders urging World Rugby to invest heavily in the European second tier. It's been believed that Irish and Scottish unions are especially opposed to relegation out of the Six Nations. World Rugby has insisted that the second division will be both lucrative and competitive, as they apparently have spent the past few weeks trying to convince the concerned Six Nations unions. It is also believed that the Southern Hemisphere teams who make up Sanza, New Zealand, South Africa, Australia and Argentina are fully in support of the nation's championship, as they battle financial difficulties and a player drain to Europe, which considering how many players have come over already, as well as the obvious wave of people who leave after the World Cup ends, it makes sense. France have also supported the World Rugby's concept. However, Six Nations Limited is believed to be lukewarm about World Rugby's proposals, especially due to the fact they're trying to negotiate their own big money moves with the private equity giants, CVC. And this all feels very complicated, and I guess that's the problem. You're never going to please as everyone, but World Rugby needs to find a way of at least keeping some people happy, especially the players who this new system will be taxing a lot physically. And I guess that's what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Signed. NGJ. I hope this video has helped at least someone in finding out what's going on. Please like, share and subscribe with the notify bell on to let you know when I upload. Thanks again, I'll see you later.